you know, if everyone just doesn't support not just me, but all the local businesses here, they're all just going to disappear. And you see it now. We sell only USDA prime beef, which is 2% of the beef that's raised in this country. Along with that, we also sell some sustainably raised grass-fed beef, lamb, pork, and poultry. Stalbots uh, was opened by Mr. Stalbots himself uh, in 1917. He came from Germany, and uh, we were one of the premier shops at the time. Um, we were one of the first stores in in the Brooklyn area to you to go from an ice-based showcase to a refrigerant-based showcase. Uh, Stalbots actually owned it for the shortest period of time. He went back to Germany to fight in World War One. And when he, I'm not sure how, if he returned or not, but it was sold to Martin Lang. I don't know what year Martin bought the store, honestly. Uh, but Martin owned it, and then my dad came to work here in the mid-1950s. I want to say about 1955, 1956. So my dad walked in here in the mid-50s he was en route to the unemployment office and kind of got turned around, saw the, this butcher shop. He was, he was already a butcher, you know. He just finished his four years of training from the New York City Food Trade High School. Walked in here to looking for the unemployment office and Martin at the time, Martin Lang was the owner, said to him, well, if you're unemployed and you're a butcher, why don't you just work here? And my dad said, well, I don't know, I'm just gonna go to the office. He said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you work here, work four days, I'll pay you for five. If you like it at the end of the week, then you stay. If you don't, you take your five days and you, and you, and you walk. So he worked the four days and he said, okay, I'll, I'll stick it out, I like it here. He said, all right, go collect your check for five, for five days. The reason why he approached my dad to stay and work the, the four days paying for five is because he he saw himself in my father. He saw like a younger version of himself. And as history played out, Martin became like a father figure to my dad. For my dad, my dad, my dad's dad died when he was very when he was 13 years old. And so Martin kind of filled those shoes a little bit. Butcher shops, like most places, it's a matter of convenience. Uh, you know, you're mostly going to shop where you where you live. You know what, what's close by, and so you know we've been servicing this community for well, my family for nearly 60 years, and so we have a, a long list of customers that, that have been with us for many many years. I've seen I've seen couples have children. I've seen their children grow up. I've seen those children have children. So yeah, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, it all kind of started back when my dad passed last year, uh, leaving the financial end of the business in, in shambles. Uh, I basically inherited the business with uh, just no money in the account and so many things to be repaired or replaced. For the last probably five years or so, unfortunately my dad didn't put any money into the business. Um, and I, I had been, you know, just saying we need new machinery, we need new showcases, we need this to be fixed, that to be fixed. So when he passed, it all fell onto me. You have that combined with a, a slowing trend in sales. Um, right now, meat is being demonized. It, you know, it's being accused of, you know, live, raising livestock is being accused of destroying the, the atmosphere and causing global change. So you have this big push against against me. The ever increasing cost of doing business uh, in New York City and other cities, you know, taxes and payroll and insurance. Of course, the immense increase in the cost of food has forced us to reduce our profit margins so that we no longer can maintain the same margins. So whatever we're selling, we're actually making less on, even though it actually sells for more money. So you put all those things together and it you know, conspired to put us in uh, dire financial straits. But the worst thing that happened was the DOB came in and they put 
not just our building, but all these buildings, last these, these six buildings, all in emergency decree because the facades are coming away from the building. So the building is not in danger of falling down or anything, but it has to be repaired. And estimates start at $125,000. These buildings are federal, city, and state landmarks, so we have to work with the Landmarks Preservation Commission to make sure that everything's done according to the way you know it was originally. There's no imminent threat of it falling, but it's not something that we can push back or postpone. It's got to be done now. The city, if we don't do it, the city will basically take over. They'll do it for, you know, five hundred thousand dollars, you know, and then hand me the bill for half a million dollars for the pair of the facade. So, with all those things combining together, I, I found myself in a position where I, I didn't know how to move forward. You know the. The truth is, I've been doing this since I'm 11. I'm 56 now. It's, it's what's in my blood. My, my dad trained me. I was so fortunate and honored to be able to learn as an apprentice under him. And we've been serving this community for 60 years and that's what I want to keep doing. I want to keep providing this great product to our, our local community and continue to serve them. And we're going to just do all we can to, to keep it going. And you know, we tell people, like, you know, you don't have to donate. Just come on in and buy a steak or a pork chop. That, that, that's good, too. And, it, and I think the bigger picture here, like, just beyond me, is a message to the community that says, hey, we can't do this without you. We need your support. And I understand life's busy and crazy and, you know, online options are abundant everywhere and they're super convenient and I, and I get that I don't I don't hold that against anybody heck I, I use Amazon too but um, you know if everyone just doesn't support not just me but all the local businesses here they're all just gonna disappear and you see it now I mean Court Street used to be a food mecca merchants like us we made the neighborhood people moved here because we were here they wanted to be in an area where like they could just walk out their door and go to the baker, or the fishmonger, the butcher, or the vegetable guy, you know, have all these services, the dry cleaner, everything is all, all available. And now like, you know, with the cost of rents and expenses, they're all just disappearing. And, you know, lots of corporate entities are moving in and a lot of, you know, a lot of real estate offices, you know, like how many real estate offices can you have in one neighborhood? But um, yeah, it's, it's really important that we have to support your local merchant, you know, and, Sometimes it, it, it costs a little bit more money because, I mean, guys like us, we can't compete with, you know, Whole Foods or Fresh Direct, you know, it's, it's, it's not possible. But the flip side of that is if you don't, it's going to be just like a ghost town in terms of, you know, small merchants like us.